Well, we're back after a big weekend in the thoroughbred industry at Churchill Downs. The 2024 Kentucky Derby is in the rear view as we take a look in a couple. Actually, next week. Are we already talking about the Preakness next week, guys? That's what it is. Comes we'll fast. Saturday. So, yes. Uh, we had the Oaks last week and the Derby, of course. So, we're going to get into that. And then we have two races that we're going to talk about here on today's show. We have the Grade 3 Peter Pan and also the Man of War. That is a Grade 2 race, actually, from uh, Aqueduct, also known as Belmont at the Big A. I I just don't uh, mean. That's because the Belmont meet would usually be run now if they were at Belmont, but Belmont is closed for construction. And I'm assuming that's just all for advertising because otherwise it's a silly thing to say. No, yes. the yes. meat ends, but it is silly. Yeah. But that's besides the point. All right. We're going to have uh, some comments we're going to go over, obviously. I know we had a lot of viewers uh, that uh, checked us out this past week. So uh, we'll, we'll get some questions and things of that nature. Uh, first off, though. Um, first of all, how about just thank you for everybody that tuned Yeah, that? how about a thank you to everybody that listened. We had unbelievable numbers. So thank you, all you listeners. There you go. Thank you for thanking them. All right. So, yes, I appreciate everybody that tuned in. Um, And uh, uh, we also gave those uh, bonus races over at Patreon. And uh, we're going to be sending out an email after uh, this show. So maybe by the time you see this this, uh, video, you're going to see the email that I'm going to present because we have a lot of things that we're thinking about as far as uh, marketing the show through YouTube uh, and uh, a few other options that uh, I've come to light. So uh, we really appreciate all of your comments and your feedback. So let us know what you think when we send out that email to all our Patreon members. All right. Let's uh, first of all um, start with some of these uh, questions or comments. I, I want to start. We, we finally had one on Twitter. We haven't had one on Twitter yet until Zicky Foos said, well, because of you guys, I won. Thank you guys so much. All their of all their views. This might be the start of me watching horse racing all season long. So that's Maybe, that's what it's all about, isn't it, guys? Absolutely. Maybe he took our selections, threw them out, and bet everyone else. That's <laughs> no, how we got him to win. It doesn't sound like what he said. But, okay. <laughs> well, I don't see how we could have possibly helped them. But well, we had ahead. the bonus races. Yeah. Oh, I'm talking about the derby. Yeah. I mean. So... And by the way, also, let's keep in mind, I say this all the time, just as a repeater, it's not always about our picks. It's about the analysis of the race, the analysis of horses. So they might decide, hey, I like another horse, and I didn't think of taking him until they said something that made sense to me. Right. And then that's why I took him. So, yeah. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Uh, YouTube, here are some comments. Uh, Pat Mixstuff. (laughs) This is a good one to start with. Baffert is a crooked cheater. Okay, are we going to waste time with this? What does that mean? Baffert's a crooked cheater. Okay, yeah, I, good. I Next know. comment, please. Uh, Mitchell Ross. John, did you have a brother, David? That was my father. Your father, I David. I to him, yes. Uh, L.A. Boyko. Why I love this show, and this is going to get into uh, segueing into the Oaks. Uh, why I love the show. Into Champagne. Didn't see that coming. So he was talking, of course, about uh, the selection that Chad had in the Oaks as a long shot. But let's talk about the Oaks. Uh, What did you guys think about the performance by uh, Thorpedo Anna winning an easy, convincing Kentucky Oaks? She's a nice horse. She did what she was supposed to. Other horses didn't show up. The Chad Brown horse had a perfect trip at the top of the stretch. I thought she was going by. She didn't. Kenny McPeak deserves a lot of credit. Not easy to win the Oaks and the Derby on the same weekend. It hasn't been done in a long time. Uh, some trainer Jones many, many years ago did it. And Not some trainer, Ben Jones, the ben legend. Jones. 52. Yes. The, the, the trainer for Calumet Farm. But look, it's not just Kenny McPeak that, that, that did this as well. I mean, Brian Hernandez, and, and you start with the Oaks and then we'll get to the Derby. The ride he gave on Torpedo Anna in taking it to them from the start of the race, knowing how the track, look, the track played differently on Friday and Saturday. There was a lot of rain on Friday, you know, Saturday, the track dried out and it was the, on both days, really, it was the aggressiveness that Brian showed from the jump that really, really, you know, put him in the right position to win. 
he took it to it. Look, ways and means, the question was going to be if, if it was too far for her. You know, just just FYI, you know, was she did she need one more off the bench? And he, he, he took it to them every step of the way, led every step of the way, and, and was really a never-in-doubt winner. I, I thought, you know, the horse I like, Champagne, she – she, uh, she she gave us a, a cheap thrill there turning for home, but just wasn't good enough. Uh, just FYI, ran a, ran a bang-up race for second. I think she didn't embarrass herself. And Chad Brown's two fillies running third and fourth were were solid. But, I mean, there was no doubt about it. Torpedo Anna was the the best horse in the race on the day. Uh, she's clearly the, the leader of the division right now. And, you know, Kenny McPeak's going to have a decision to make about whether he wants to run on the acorn, which is now at a mile and an eighth instead of the mile distance that it was for years when it was at Belmont Park, but being at Saratoga now, it's a mile and an eighth. Or if he wants to try and run against the boys, going a mile and a quarter in the Belmont Stakes. So that'll be the decision to uh, to watch. It's fifty thousand dollars if he wants to nominate. Not that that's a, a problem after winning the two million dollar Kentucky Oaks, but uh, that'll be the decision that they have to make is is what route they want to go in. And and does it matter if Mystic Dan runs in the Belmont or not? You know, do they need a second jockey? And and really to me. The funny thing is, everyone sits there and they said that, well, you know, if if Mystic if if Mystic Dan the Derby winner and Torpedo Anna the the Oaks winner ran in the Belmont, then we would just need to you, you know, you would have to separate them because Brian rides both. I might think that Torpedo Anna might be a better horse than than Mystic Dan, and and I might ride I might ride Torpedo Anna over Mystic Dan wow. to be honest with. You. By the way, the ride he gave uh, Mystic Dan was unbelievable. They had a. a if- it was all over Twitter where they had just him isolated. He banged off the rail three times turning. He he gave that horse just an unbelievable ride. And it starts from the, it starts from the start, right? Yes. He, he out hustled Louis Sayas and Dornock to the spot from the very beginning. Everyone well, thought Dornock had some trouble at the start, though. But but you're right. No, he ca- yeah. he caused the trouble to Dornock because he he was the more aggressive jockey. Everyone assumed that Dornock and Louis were going to be aggressive for Monslot. He broke a step slow, and in the Derby in a twenty-horse field, you, you can't afford to step right. slow. You know, and, and and it was funny because Brian Hernandez said after the fact, he said, "I went back and I was watching old Derbies." He said, "I with saw Calvin, Calvin Morrell. Morrell. That was I saw his him idol. Find that bird." He said, "Ah, that was too far back. That uh, we can't do that." Then he goes, "I saw him ride Super Saver." He goes, "Ah, you know that might work for my horse," and he tried to emulate that trip. And he did it to, to absolute precision. Look, Brian, uh, his wife, Jamie, I've known them for a long time. Just just salt of the earth people. A beautiful family. Uh, couldn't be happier for, for them. And they deserve all the accolades. Look, he, he was the, the regular rider of a horse named Fort Lauren many, many moons ago that people might forget from Ian Wilkes. He won the Breeders' Cup at a young age. Yeah. Uh, at a time when he was thinking about just packing up and going back to the smaller circuit of, of Delta Downs and Louisiana Downs, Evangeline Downs. And that horse kind of kept him you know, on the mainstream, and he's been Kenny McPeak's right hand for the last couple of years, and they've had a lot of success together. And, look, Brian, Brian, I really felt like was in a zone. And and how he rode the derby, to me, was like how I ride rides every race. It just – it seemed like they were playing with house money. They had won the Oaks and everything else like that, and it just seemed like they're like, yeah, we, we got this. We got this. Why not? We have nothing to lose. And he just rode the horse with so much aggression and so much passion – and, and, and it came off in the race. And at the end of the day, look, there was some some controversy at the end that we can talk about briefly. But, um, you know, if that race is run in a 10 horse field, I'm not sure he wins it. He won it making the move he did at the start, making the move he made at the top of the stretch and having enough to hold on. And and that's that's the most important thing. Um, and so credit to, to, to all involved. Um, but if they run that race 10 times, I'm not sure he wins that race 10 times. All right, well, we're going to get By into the way, that. There was, there was some other horses in the race that had big trouble. Uh, the uh, the Cox horse, the horse that, that I liked, Donna Marie, totally wiped out at the start. So Yeah, what were there, like five the, of those horses that were wiped out? Yeah, they made a total sandwich. Donna yes. Marie finished eighth, but she, if you watch the race, it really was not a bad eighth. I'll yeah. tell you that much. So what's yeah, next for that's, Torpedo that's, Anna? Listen. Listen, that's the Derby. That's the whole yes, thing. Of course, the day, of course. That's, that's the Derby. And that's why I've always said the Breeders' Cup is different than the Derby because the Derby, it's the horse that had the best trip, not necessarily the best horse in the race. Um, exactly. If we win the Derby next year, we're not going to apologize. <laughs> What's next for Torpedo Anna? I don't believe we're going to go to the Acorn or, or the Belmont Stakes. She, she's going to okay. run next on June 8th. 
It's just a matter of which which race he runs in. Okay, and, and by the way, have we had uh, what was the last time we had this trainer jockey trainer jockey Oaks Derby deal? Nineteen fifty two. What was that? Nineteen fifty two. Fifty two. Ben Jones. Ben Jones but, and Eddie. Well, oh, that was that Jones jockey. deal. Calvin Burrell won on Mind Your Bird and on Rachel Alexander the same weekend. That and was then when, when the Philly and the Colt ran together in the Preakness, he rode the Philly and he was right. Right, right, right. I'm right. just, I'm just saying. Look, it's You're interesting. Right, Jack, Jack, off listening. the numbers, off the numbers, hey. Torpedo in is better. By the nobody's, way, nobody's, nobody's, nobody's had the 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 guts to ask Brian Hernandez who he would ride, and I think he might give a diplomatic answer. I don't know that he would tell you uh, who he'd ride unless he, you know, he absolutely had to, but. Uh, to me, and this is a question I wish we could, you know, put it on the poll on YouTube or Twitter or whatever, you know, who you would ride. And I think most people think that they would ride Mystic Dan. But, I mean, Torvito Anna, both her races this year have been has been sensational. By the way, the ride he gave her in in, in the Apple Blossom at, uh, at Oakland was even races. more amazing. Yeah. He had the 12 posts and ended up on the rail. That was one of the greatest rides you'll ever see. All right. All right. Uh, and we're going to still get into the derby here, but let's continue uh, with these uh, questions. And uh, James Lankop, new to horse racing. So this is for John. What does it mean when you say a horse ran a 10? A 10 is a figure. Every, a, a sheet number. We give we uh, give every horse a number for we, every we race. The, we need the rags and sheets. Right. We, we give the rags. Right. We give every horse the rags and sheets. Uh, uh, give every horse a number for every race they run in. The lower, the better. Not like the buyers. The buyers are the higher, the better. The Raggison figures are the lower, the better. And, so a 10 is a pretty good number. And, and if you, people wanted to find your find the numbers, how do they go about finding the numbers? How? They can call the office, go to the website, the sheets, the sheets.com, and buy, buy the sheets there. It's $40 a day yeah. for each racing card. Yeah, and I'll, uh, I'll I'll put a link in the description for that as well, um, if I don't remember to have that there. So we'll have that there. And by the way, a blanket. By the way, you also have uh, what would you, what do you call them when you when you get on those calls, John? And you have those uh, seminars. Yeah, Zoom seminar every day for Nara. And, and that, is that is that just for the sheets? Yes, you have to buy the set of sheets for that day. To join uh, Zoom. There you go. So the Zoom is free. The sheets are the forty bucks. So. And, and 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 also, just if you ever hear me saying, "Well, the horse went 14, 13, 12, 11, whatever," that's exactly what we're referencing. So if right. we're saying it's going lower, then that's obviously a good thing in the numbers. Uh, by the way, also uh, Lenord Brazil. We've got two on Lenord Brazil. Where is that number you guys talk about on the form? The elevens and the nines. And I'm, it's not, you're talking about the numbers, the sheet numbers. You're not going to see them in the form. The form has buyer figures. The sheets are the sheet numbers. So the sheet numbers are totally different. The form costs you 10 bucks or 11 bucks, whatever it is, to buy the racing form. The sheets, it's $40 a track. If you get multiple tracks, they give you a discount. Okay. Uh, Jake315, all he said was awesome. So I think that's a good thing. Uh, that's not a bad thing. No. John C. Legorado. Chad, a great trainer. Love him. Me too. Next. Jeff Hockman. Great analysis as always. Good luck, gents. Th th those were the positives. Now, how about this one? Lorna Leto. Well, Chad thinks it's his show. What a bag of hot air. This should Whoa. be a, K a Kentucky Derby tutorial, not Chad pontificating tedious exasperating guess what no one forces you to watch the show if you don't like it you can turn it off i don't know that andy serling had another uh, another twitter handle a sodium a sodium yeah. <laughs> lorna leto thumbs down chad stealing the show hanging it's up the same, it's the same person look at, at the at the at the end at the end of the day if she'd like to come on or he'd like to come on the show we'd more than welcome their, their analysis but this show is not a tutorial. It's an analysis. That's we what should actually have a about. guest. We should have a slot for a guest on a week that's really slow. Yeah. But well, you got to start with Rockface. Rockface is the first. Rockface is solid, man. Rockface is one of the most solid listeners we have. But if the uh, the the we have Andy a lot of great listeners, to, uh, Rockface may be at us. the top. Yeah. And 
And then regarding the Derby, as we segue into that, and we'll just wrap up with our Derby talk, Mark Lewin, uh, Fierceness made the lead in a slow 47-2 in the Breeders' Cup, whereas the Breeders' Cup distaff went 46-1. Fierceness, a vulnerable favorite. So right on, Mark. Well, we said that before. He's never put two races together. That was the advantage of the sheets. Every time he ran a number, he reacted. That's and it. we said there was a chance that he had no excuse. He broke clean. He had no excuse. He may have hopped a little bit at the start. He came up zero. Yeah, how disappointing was that, Chad? Well, I mean, it's 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 ultra disappointing for for all all, all connections involved, and um, you know, I, I I don't think they could have scripted the start any better. I don't think he, you know, there look, there was some controversy. The the after we got off the air, after we did our our show, uh, pontificating um, our hot air analysis. Uh, there was some conversation about him having some sore heels um, the last couple of days going into the race. I, I'm not making excuses for him. I think, you know, Todd Pletcher certainly thought that he was good enough to, to run in the race, but he just, he, he, he had no excuse. Like Jonathan said, I mean, he, he, I mean, if, if you would, if you told, if you told their connections, that's where they were going to be at the start of the race after a quarter, after a half, I, I don't think, anybody would complain at all the only the only person that can possibly complain uh is Dwayne lucas because i'm not sure where just Steele was going uh, what was being, he doing on the lead it or just it, it, it seemed like he was trying to be the fullback for his father and just take out the competition but i, I don't know it, it by look, the way I, by the way there is a rider change joel rosario will be riding in the preakness just yeah that, uh, there you go so that's your answer for yeah. just Steele. Um, yeah so much so much for the uh, the family backgrounds and everything together. It well, just didn't make any sense. It, it didn't really that moment is gone. Was, but but I, I think uh, other than that, I mean, like you said, you know, some of the horses were wiped out at the start of the race. But, um, you know, everything else kind of went according to plan. And Sierra Leone and Forever Young, um, they they battled at the top of the stretch. They battled to the wire. Um, they ended up noses noses behind at the end of the race. Look, at, at the end of the day now, this has become, you know, once is a, once is, is on you, twice is on me, three times is a problem, right? This is the third time that, that Sierra Leone has, has done this where he lugs in um, drastically bad. Now, he's a brilliant horse, uh, but this is something that he's done before. So just like Fierceness hasn't put good races together, uh, Sierra Leone continues to lug in at the end this of the race. This is a bad habit he has. But and, if anyone and, will figure it out, it'll probably be Chad Brown. So. What do you mean Tyler, lug in? He, so... He, Oh, he's drifting, okay. he's drifting inwards. It's like it's it's like a car that needs to be realigned. Yeah, that was definitely right. something that I was going to actually bring if up you're, because if, I, you're, if yeah. you're in a NASCAR event, you see a car kind of like that. You so take it for a pit stop. Yeah. So look, Tyler Gaffleyon and and everyone's going to talk about you know and and they want to hear about you know kind of the the inquiry that was and everything else. To me, if you watch the head-on replay, both horses, both horses, Forever Young and Sierra Leone, are going back and forth with each other, and. and at the end of the day, the picture that came out after the race was over, I don't, I still don't know exactly where that picture took place. It'd be nice if anybody interviewed Tyler Gaffleyone. They interviewed the Japanese jockey who said that he didn't have a problem with it. No, yep. nobody's interviewed Tyler Gaffleyone about what happened. I think he's just trying to correct the horse as he best was. he can, so the horse doesn't crash into somebody. His whip got stuck in the reins or the mane of of yeah. the other of the other wow. horse. Here's the amazing thing. Yes, it could have been equal blame on both jockeys but it's the job of the stewards to drop the flag this is a major race Every, the whole world is watching everybody that knows nothing saw there was contact the stewards have to make a foul claim just because you claim a, just because you put up an inquiry doesn't mean you're taking the horse down they had an obligation they dropped the ball the stewards absolutely dropped the ball they have to make a claim of foul there they have to well, that's not the only one, John. I mean, Brian. At the end of the day, it's a brilliant ride, but Brian Hernandez eliminated Joel Rosario at the top yeah. of the stretch. Yes, his boot hit the rail, but he also he also smacked Track Phantom twice. <laughs> I understand that Track Phantom was at the horse and wasn't going to win the race and wasn't going to cost him a placing, but he completely just sideswiped. Yeah, that's the whole world didn't see. Everybody Look, at the end of the day, here's the, here's the stretch run. You have to drop a flag there. Here, I, that's that's fine, 
and I think everything's reviewed, and it took a while for them to make it official. So for, 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 for the sake of the argument, let's say they should have just hung the flag while they were looking at it to make it official. They said they were waiting for the photo. I think they were just looking at the race. But, but to me, the, the thing is you want them to play. You don't want the whistle to always get involved. We've had so much controversy in these races the last, the last few years. And, and, and if the jockeys aren't claiming foul, and yes, they're looking at it, and they didn't they didn't drop the flag. We've we've seen this controversy two games in a row in the the Knicks Indiana Pacers series. They're calling a double dribble. The guy's dribbling the ball fine. They're calling a kickball. Look, mistakes happen all the time. It, at the end of the day, but, but Chad, this wasn't one bump. They were they were crashing. It looked like roller derby. <laughs> the the stewards had a responsibility for people that are even new to the game to drop the flag and call an inquiry. That's all. It's their job. It's their job. They waited an hour between races. What the hell's another 10 minutes? Oh, and, and not for anything. You had $10.2 million of handle bet on it from Japan that I'm sure had the horse place first and second. You had the, 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 the highest rating since 1989 on TV. I mean, we, we captured we captured the That's audience. The I'm still not thing. sure, That's I'm still not sure why, unless the fact that Travis Kelsey was there and all the Swifties were, uh, were tuning in, but Look, it was it was great. It was a safe day, which is uh, more important than the finishes and everything else. Everybody yes. came home safe and sound. And, and and now, but here's the thing: let's not shoot ourselves in the foot, and let's try and carry this momentum forward. And unfortunately, after the Derby, the the, the it's it's the negative controversy. It's why wasn't there an inquiry onto this? The, they're but not going to be always going to have that. You're always we're only going to we're only gonna have a D Wayne Lucas horse in the Preakness. You know, yada yada yada. It's it's all again negative stories instead of the positive stories, and that's the problem that horse racing has. We have a giant PR problem, and we shoot ourselves in the foot constantly. When was the last time I can't remember? Three noses on the wire in the Derby. It was in a, an, um, an unbelievably exciting race. You know, but, even if you didn't win the bet, you say it was still a great race. But here's the here's the problem. Okay. Everybody now is so concerned about their percentages and everything else that we're going to go to the Preakness now. We're going to talk about the Preakness. The Preakness is next week. It's a week away. Maybe we have Mystic Dan. Maybe. He's not official yet. For sure, we don't have Sierra Leone. And for sure, we don't have Forever Young. Well, why would you run? If you're, you're a trainer, Chad, would you come back? If you didn't hit the board, if you don't run one, two, is there any point to run in the Preakness? Things have changed. Things have changed. Look. I, I think that they should have a point system in place with a big bonus structure at the end, forever has the most points at the end of the series. And then all of a sudden those three horses, if there's a, a $10 million prize for the horse that has the most points at the end of the series, it, it means something. I like it. But, but, but you're right. There's no point. It, nobody, you're, you're not a stallion. If you won the Preakness, I, nobody cares that Oxbow is a stallion. All you're right? going to do is fry your horse for the next six months. If you run him back on two weeks, but two weeks, I so think here, here's the thing. Back in the day, forever, they ran horses in two weeks. They, they run horses in between the bridge. Yes, no more, though. No more. That, that time is over. I mean, yeah. yeah. So, I, look, people are talking about, do you change the pregnancy? You move the pregnancy back to, to, no. to, to no. bring these horses. That, then that changes, that changes what the Triple Crown is. Exactly. It's like moving the fences in because no one hit a home run in three games. So but, they've done, hey, but they've done that before in baseball. Yeah, but don't ruin horse racing. They do. They ruin every other sport. Uh, overall, though, uh, the effort from Sierra Leone, and I know Mystic Dan was third. I mean, started third. But just the effort from the two posts to get to that spot, and we talked about him as a closer and all the horses you're going to have to pass. Uh, and to lose by this much, uh, it, that was still very impressive by Sierra Leone. Yeah, well, how about T.O. Password, who had zero shot, the other Japanese horse, in career start number three, to finish fifth? I mean, if you were going to pick a horse to run last, that probably would have been your horse, no? The, I don't know. Florence Rue has finished 18th, 19th, and 20th last three years, so he's, he's doing a pretty good job. Himself. I know someone that actually bet fierceness to run last at 75 to 1. Well, th this was oh, huge. So, so, so. This was a huge race for ja for Japan. That's for sure. It certainly was. So, and especially the fact that they both started right next to each other in the stall. The whole race, the whole thing was just, I mean, again, forever young, uh, out racing. What, what you thought, Chad, I mean, just again, it, this oh, is. I, I have no problem with him as a racehorse. My problem is they scratched Forte last year for how he trained. And this horse trains exactly the same. And if anybody watched Mike Welsh's tweets, who I respect more uh, as much as anybody's 
watching morning workouts. He he had the same the same head scratching thing watching the horse train every day. The horse the horse does not look good training. He, you can't question how he did as a racehorse. He was undefeated going into the race. I didn't think he was going to get clearance to even run in the race. How about he he's like a nose away from being undefeated? Not only that. He was in Dubai or Maidan and then came across the world. This horse put in three big races in two months. That's unbelievable how good this horse is, I think. So 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 that's the reason that they so they 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 withdrew um Forte last year. Uh, for what reason? Because he didn't pass the vets. That's why right. you know And he didn't Chad pass the seven. vets for what reason? They said he wasn't they, physically sound. They thought something was wrong with him. They didn't like the way he was walking or jogging the morning of the race. That's why, and and they went crazy, Rapoli, and rightfully so. He had his own vets that passed him. There was no way they were not going to let fierceness run. I mean, he would have had a stroke if they would have scratched him. You know. Well, he replaced. He replaced last year. He brought the priest with him and he got the horse crash. This year, he had some kind of a a five foot plant with him. You know, I, I, I think he, he needs to he needs to find something else. I don't know. I, well, we'll figure it out. these figure are the type. Out. These are the types of uh, uh, topics that we're going to definitely get more into uh, during the season, and uh, so stay tuned for that because we have a lot of stuff outside the actual racing that we do each week that uh, we want to get into uh, this channel. So stay tuned for that. Okay, so that's the Derby, um, and that was last week at the Oaks. It's now time to fast forward to. Uh, the race is coming up on Saturday at Aqueduct. And again, don't forget, next week we're going to talk about the Preakness and uh, probably and the hopefully Black the Black Eyed Susan, Susan as well. Black Eyed Susan is Friday. The Preakness is Saturday. So stay yeah. tuned for both races. I guess we'll try to do it as early as possible. But Is it see. set up the same way where we'll be able to get all the information know, Chad, early in the week? When are they going to draw, Chad? Are they going to draw early? Monday? Yeah. Oh, good. So we could do it early. All right. So we'll definitely have a show earlier in the week, like the Derby. Uh, so stay, so keep an eye on that. All right. So here we go. Aqueduct. Let's start with uh, the sixth race. We're going back to back six and seven and six is the Peter Pan. It's a grade three, a mile and an eighth. And these are for three-year-olds. So these and are three-year-olds. Time out, time out. We have two late scratches in the Peter Pan. The four lonesome boy is coming out and the five Tus Tuscan gold. The Chad Brown horse is coming out, the two to one morning line favorite. He will be going to the Preakness. So Ah, okay. And Tuscan Gold, just so everybody knows, has a fifteen fourteen eight sheet line. So coming off an eight. And you know what? This was well, I'm taking a look at that. I mean, because and by the way, before the scratch, was Tuscan Gold gonna be your pick, John? No. Okay. Just because he was yeah. two to one? He's two to one, he's off the top. I was hoping he would bounce. At two to one, I don't need him. No, pass. Chad, were you going to pick him? A thousand percent. Okay. So this is a good, dis well, I guess maybe a good decision for John, not so much for Chad. All right. But that means you really like this horse. Down. No, it's a bad decision for me because I would have had a two to one to bet against. Oh, that's true. That's true. No, it's a horrible Unless decision. Unless he won, of course. So, um, but you're right. Yeah. Okay. So, but next week, it's only next week. We'll be talking about Tuscan Gold and the Preakness. All right. So that means that there's only six horses left in the field. Uh, let's go ahead and start with the one uh, protective. By the way, the favorite of the race now uh, becomes the three, the wine steward at five to two. And I'm sure those odds are going to change uh, pretty much because uh, they were going to change anyway. But now without uh, Tuscan gold, you would think the wine steward is going to go off a lot shorter than that. Protective, though, we'll start with him, John, uh, the eight to one shot. Um, and Ired Ortiz gets the ride for the first time. Coming off a third place showing at thirty-eight to one in the Wood Memorial, ran a twelve in that race, and before that had run a twenty-three. His best was a sixteen. Yeah, but the sixteen was as a two-year-old, and it was in July as a two-year-old, which is a big number. So that gives you a, a license to run the twelve that he ran last time out. This horse does not necessarily have to bounce. So looks like a big top, but it's really not a big top because of the number that he ran as a two-year-old. Well, the two-year-old race, too, was won by Valentine Candy, who popped the gate that day and then won four stakes at Oakland this winter, right? So he got beat by a really nice sprinter. Yeah. The third in the wood, look, let's not forget, the wood was a race that was marred with some controversy when the horse clipped heels and went down. So, I mean, resilience was, was well clear. 
and then there was just kind of like a scrum behind as to who was going to finish second, third, fourth, whatever. I, I don't, I don't take the third as seriously, maybe as as you do with his with his twelve sheet number. Um, he's got to prove it to me. I just, I, I'm not, I'm not sold on this horse yet. He's still a maiden. Um, I'm not, I'm not ready. I, I, I'd much prefer the other Todd horse over this one. All right, the two is unique insight right now at eight to one. Uh, coming off a nine, which is an eight-point top from his previous race. Also, that race is going to be less than a month. Uh, what's coming on, coming into that race, by the way, uh, that was also a sloppy track. So you got to keep that into uh, into account. But anyway, uh, this is a horse that we would expect to bounce. Correct, John? Yeah, I don't like this horse at all. The nine was the second time that he was on Lasix. He's coming off of Lasix Saturday. And like you said, it was an eight-point new top. I don't give him much of a chance. How about this as a stat, though, for those stat nerds out there? Jockey Eric Cancel and Chad Brown, not a stat you think you hear that much. They're seven, they're 8 for 14 on the year, and they're 8 for 13 at Aquedon. That's unbelievable. Wow. 62%. And with Chad Brown, normally you're talking about favorites and low ROI. Their ROI together is $8.08. So wow. it's not just, you know, he's normally on the longer shot. Like in this situation, uh, the other Chad Brown horse was two to one. That's going to scratch Tuscan gold. And this horse was the eight to one horse. Look, there's something about riding with confidence. I don't, I don't necessarily love this horse, but I mean, for sure, Eric Cantel is going to be riding with a lot of confidence going into this race. Let me ask you a question. Now that Flavian Pratt is freed up because they're going to scratch the other Chad Brown horse. No shot in the jockey change, is there? Not with that stat. Not with the fact that he's 8 for 13. Like, if he was 0 for 13, then I would yeah. say in a, in a New York minute. But at 8 for 13, you ride you ride the hot hand. Sometimes it's it's almost like uh, in, in hockey, in the Stanley Cup, the backup goalie plays and has a shutout and stops 57 shots. You're going to let him play the next game. Yeah. So, okay. Is this, uh, is this the horse that wants to lead? Who? Unique insight. Is this the horse that's going to want to set the pace? No. No. Okay, is that the next horse, Wine Steward? Uh, this is the favorite right now of the race, uh, and uh, this horse is coming off a ten. That's a top, a three-point top. Ran a thirteen, couple of thirteens last year. Coming off a fifteen at Keeneland in that Grade One race when he finished second, but the last race, the first race in twenty twenty-four, was that ten in April, John. Again, you're looking at a situation where this is a real short time between the 10. So this is a horse we want to definitely bet against, correct? Incorrect. No, so you're I not worried about a bounce. No, I think this horse is very strong. It's only a three-point top off his two-year-old races that he ran early. But, he, but he raced all- like three weeks ago. I understand. But the, ba- the, the base is there. The foundation is there. As a two-year-old, he ran 13s. If he never had a 13... And then all of a sudden, he had two 13s. This horse, I think, is very strong. Not only that, five career starts, three wins, two seconds. You know, he shows up every time. You can't knock this horse. You're not concerned uh, about potentially a distance issue? He won a mile and a 16th the last two uh, the last two races. The last race, the 10 was around two turns. Well, I'm just saying it looks – I mean, it looks like he's uh, – first, the first three races, he won them all. Those were six and five and six furlongs. Then he goes distance, and he's not able to complete the job. So now he's got to go even further distance. The, the distance race that he ran at Keelan was the Breeders' Cup. It was his first time going long. The Breeders' yeah. Fraturity. Breeders Fraturity. Yeah, but, okay. The Breeders' Cup Fraturity. That's look, correct. I, I think to – Greg, to Greg's point, I mean – while he lost by less than a length in both those races, he is losing ground from the top of the stretch to the wire, albeit just a little bit. But he's a half length back. He loses by three quarters of a length last time. Before that, in the British Fraternity, he's a head back. He loses by half a length. It, it's not much, but there is there is. If you're trying to poke a hole in a favorite, yeah, that would be look. That would be your hole poke. Also, he's in Kentucky. He's, he hasn't even shipped up as of today's what Thursday. We're recording the show. I think he's on his way up here now. You know, it's a long, it's a long ship up to New York, you know, to try a new track. I mean, obviously, look, he's he's won in three different tracks already. He ran well at the fourth one, so nothing to think that he wouldn't bring his track with him. But there, there, there are. By the way, Chad, excuse me, but you know that he can't even work at the track. So what's the point to get here early? It's not like you can work over the aqueduct track. You don't want to have a sixteen-hour drive, two hours, two days before you run. Now, it, for guys like Mike Maker, he does it all the time. It doesn't seem to affect his horses. But, um, 
you know, ev- everybody is everybody's different. Look, there's no there's no bones about it, right? It's it's public knowledge. We were the underbidder on this horse at the OBS March sale. I've loved this horse from from day one. So I've, obviously, I'm not going to say, say too much negative about the horse. I've I, we, we we bid three hundred thirty thousand dollars to try and buy him ourselves. So you know, he's a, he's a really talented horse. But at the end of the day. Um, you know, if you want to try and poke a hole that you can try and say he's going a little bit further and you can question until he does it, until he wins going a mile and an eighth, it, it is it is definitely a question. That's all. All right. Of course. The six is six to one shot antiquarian. This is a Pletcher Velasquez combo. And this horse is coming off a four point top, ran the two fifteens to start his career. Uh, broke his maiden with one of those 15s and then came back. I was on a sloppy track, but his last result was an 11. Back on a fast track in that grade two race. The result wasn't good, but the sheet line at 11 was. Yeah, listen, uh, he's, chances are he's probably going to react off the 11. He never raced as a two-year-old, so there is no foundation there. Can he win? Of course he can win. Any horse in this race between the six of them that are left could win because they're all within a couple of points of each other even if the wine steward runs his 10 you have other horses that can run 11s and 12s you know so obviously the horse has a shot he's gonna be my top pick look this is a horse that the connections have been very very high on from the beginning um i thought they were going to sprint him they ran him a mile in his first start where he ran a lights out race behind the really talented conquest warrior okay who's going to run back i believe in the sir barton stakes on the preakness undercard you have uh, he came back. He shipped to fairgrounds. He beat the well-regarded Cornish man that came back and broke his maiden impressively his next start. And then they they throw him to the wolves. They they try to make the Derby. It went to the Louisiana Derby. It was a little bit further maybe than he's ready for a mile and three sixteenths. This will be a a cut back in distance to a mile and an eighth. Um, he got beat by Catching Freedom, who ran well enough in the Derby. Honor Marie, who had all his trouble, and Tuscan Gold. So it's not a it's not a bad race that he's coming no. out of. And it retains the services of John Velasquez who's looking to make amends for the Pletcher Barn from last week with fierceness. And I, I think, look, they've won this race before uh, many, many moons ago, I believe with Lemon Drop Kid, who then came back and, and won the Belmont Stakes and Tenio Farm. So this is a, this is a race um, that's near and dear to their heart. And, uh, and I think they want to win the Belmont. They, they won it before with Colonial Affair. Um, it's the you know it's it's a big deal and I think this horse is is only getting better. Pre- Preservationist didn't break his maiden I think till he was five, so there's no reason to think that this horse shouldn't get better as as time goes on, and, and I think Antiquarian is is the horse to beat here, uh, knowing that he can see out the distance and just to get a little bit of a value play I think he's going to work out a good trip. He's outside of the wine steward, um, which I think plays to his advantage. And I'm just going to pick him on top at a little bit of a, of, of a higher value play. That's all. Okay. Uh, the seven, deterministic. So I ran that, started off with a 12, which is really uh, an excellent number to start your career with. Uh, did that at Saratoga, uh, won the race right away, then went to the Gotham, won that, running a seven. So what happened besides potentially just bouncing but what happened in the wood why did he have just such a disastrous run as the uh, as the favorite of that race well first of all he was coming off of a huge race he ran the seven two starts back when we loved him by the way in this room the 20 last time out is the bounce but what scares me about the 20 is it was really bad i think personally that he may not want any part of the distance and uh mm-hmm. it, is the 20 last time out because of the bounce or is the 20 because of the distance that I don't think he wants any part of? I don't know. Chad had his own theory on this horse the last time. He said they were like all confused. They didn't know what to do. They shipped him to Florida. They were going to run. Didn't you tell us that, Chad? He was going to They might go right to the Derby. They were all, they were yeah. all over. You, you, you have to be firm. And I like the fact that they decided or determined, pun intended, that they were going to skip the Derby, point for this point for this race, like uh, Christoph Kaman did with Tonalist before, and it worked out. They won the Belmont Stakes. Uh, look, he stayed in New York after the Wood Memorial. He shows three workouts over the track, three good, two five furlong building workouts, a nice half mile work last time. Much, much better. Here's my thing: I think he's not as bad as he was in the Wood, and he's not as good as he was in the Gotham. So that puts him at, and when you're talking about a sheet number, he's an 11-12 sheet number. Well, Is that's that like the rest race? of the field. Right. So so that might be good enough to win yeah. this race anyway. But but I think he's going to end up taking a lot of money. Believe it or not, I think he might actually go off as the favorite. Yeah. Um, I, 
and and I'm just going to try and try and beat him. Uh, but I, I do think that he's coming into this race a lot better than he was going into the Wood Memorial. That's that's I, my opinion. I will tell you one thing: the barn is absolutely on fire, on fire. Every horse he's sending out, even today, they won. I think two races today. They won at least a race a day. It's amazing how good Clement's barn is doing at Aqueduct. But for me, it's a very tough read. Again, it could be the distance. It could be the seven. I'm not sure. If he's a short price, I certainly would try to beat him. Yeah, I mean, I like interesting. By the way, for Christoph Clement, who who consistently wins 20, 23, 24%, graded stakes races, by the way, he only hits at 12%. So in those graded stakes races, horses come back down to earth a little bit more yeah. than, than, than like a guy like Bill Mott. Who's maybe, 20, he who's actually, who's maybe he doesn't place them properly. Maybe, maybe he doesn't place them properly. Who knows? Well, he's got the Gotham win, so that was good. Yeah, okay. Well, that's oh, one of the twelve percent. But yeah, by the way, yeah. So asking him to do it twice, then those numbers come down. Uh, by the way, I like lost the Gotham with capital idea. I, I like uh, taking advantage of horses uh, that. Um, are in this spot when I, when, when you know that you've seen something good, they disappoint when everybody's betting them to want the next race. And then they decide, well, I'm not going to go with them because they disappointed me. But unfortunately the five to one is the third choice. Now, as Chad said, may not become the favorite because the favorites out. So I, I still, this is going to be my top choice, but I hope his, his numbers don't go down drastically. That's the problem that most gamblers do, especially horse players. They look at a horse's last race and they want to bet him off the last race, whether it's good or bad. And that's the biggest mistake you can make. You never want to bet a horse off of a good race. You want to bet a horse off of a bad race because that will guarantee you value. That's all. Uh, also, you just, but, to, you just have to hope that you don't bet bet them when they're they're already on the slide. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. By the way, uh, he had seven months off in his second win. You know that Gotham, um, but then just one month off when he bounced. So well, that's... he ran once as a two year old. He ran super. They put him away. Obviously, there must have been some sort of problem. Chad, do you know if if he had any problems or anything? I don't know specifically what his uh, what his issues were. I know Clement likes to kind of freshen his horses up from two to three. I think maybe it would just be a small small thing that turns into just kind of a longer thing with, you know, looking in 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 mind as to the future. That's all. And I can tell you that he does use the sheets, so he knows what the numbers were. So, last horse mm -hmm. in the race is another. Uh, I, I think this is an interesting long shot. Again, twelve to one on native land. The sheets are uh, headed in the right direction after a couple of early starts where he's got a 19 and a 22, nothing special. But the last two races, John, as we can see, 13 and 12. So he's improved over the last several races. We also have to keep in mind two of those three were on slop, but he's coming in on a two race win streak and the sheets are saying he's heading in the right direction. So, hey, if, if we try to make some money in the exact is this is a horse I want to try to do it with. Okay, listen, he's 12 to 1 morning line. I'm not going to knock the horse. Personally, I think he's going to go backwards off of those two races, but I could be wrong. And why do you see that? I just think the last two races are both efforts for him. Okay. You know, it's too much development in too short a period of time. He had no races as a two year old, so now all of a sudden he has a seven point, uh, you know. It's his fifth point. race in five months. Yeah. Well, whatever. It's still a seven-point improvement. I think he has to take a step backwards before he makes another forward move. Just my opinion. Selections. No, Chad hasn't even talked about. Oh, those. I'm sorry. I apologize, Chad. I, I I don't think the the remainder of any show that I do here with you guys I will ever pick a mastery. So I'm out. A what? <laughs> the desire. He doesn't like desire. Mastery. What does that mean? What's mastery, sire? He's father it? of the horse. He doesn't like the breeding. Okay. I guess he has a personal vendetta. Uh, ah, the horse master. Okay, don't got ask. It. Okay. Just he stands at Claiborne Farm and he's not installed one. That's what I have to install. <laughs> okay. All right. So, John, what are you going to do? Three I'm with. Play, I'm playing the three, the wine steward over the one protective and the seven deterministic. Three over one seven. Chad, you've got the six antiquarian anything else yeah i'll play him underneath uh just lightly with the two three and seven with uh unique insight the wine steward and deterministic but i i really think antiquarian takes a step forward here and i think uh he, he stamps his ticket to the belmont thing 
And you, Greg, what is it going to be? I'm going to go with deterministic over the 188. Try to make some money there. There you go. 